I'm here at the National Library of New Zealand, Auckland, where I have been really intrigued and inspired by their approach to the future of libraries. Hello, and could you introduce who you are today? Hi, I'm Elizabeth Jones, and I'm manager of Learning Futures and Development, or services to schools um, with the National Library of New Zealand. And I'm Andrew Cowie, and I'm a development specialist for the Learning Futures, the Learning Futures team. Very interesting how the, the focus there, just in the title of the, of the team, of Learning Futures, that, that I think is different, but can be a really good example for libraries everywhere. Something else I noticed is that in your mission statement, you include co-creation. Can you tell us about that? Sure. The National Library has a vision, mission, which is to collect, connect, and co-create knowledge to power the nation. And I think the collect and connect dimensions of that are probably pretty familiar. Of course, libraries collect knowledge, collect artifacts, collect information. Connecting is about how do you make that accessible through knowledge networks, how do you get that out there. But the co-create is a really interesting piece because that moves the whole role of libraries into something much more generative. It is about actually saying that knowledge isn't just static, it is about what happens to that, how is that generated into value, and that means working with many other people to create new perspectives, new knowledge literally sometimes, publications, but it's also new insights and new ways of understanding the world. That takes us into a social and learning space as well as a kind of knowledge creation space. And there are lots of examples which we are exploring at the moment about how we might do that. And so with the co in there, so we're not just facilitating the creation, we're, we're an active partner. Absolutely. Is that forging a new mental model about libraries? Uh, we hope so. <laughs> I think one of the real challenges and it's true everywhere for brand library is the idea that it's a place or space that has stuff in it and it's transactional and you go and get it and however valuable it is there's very little understanding of the transformative co-creating aspect of that um, if we're moving to much more about being places and spaces where librarians and others work together to develop new insight and to make meaning it becomes a much more of a partnership model for actually powering new learning than the way we have often thought about libraries in the past. Okay. Uh, in terms of mental models of libraries, it is something that um, the Learning Futures team is very actively working on. We have, particularly in our area of working with schools primarily, um, you often will get people saying, well, we don't need a library now, what we need is an information center, which always has the strange irony of not Kind of thing. So which bit of a library wasn't actually providing information? Um, or thinking, you know, in community sometimes we need a community hub, or we need a computer centre, or we need a place for people to come and get access to the internet. And meanwhile, strikingly, right there in the community are these wonderful institutions and this incredible enduring legacy of libraries and the concept of library. So we've got a lot of work, I think, to do there. And some of it is about reclaiming the word library, I think, to be something perhaps even taking the long view. What was Alexandria? You know, it was about a sharing of knowledge to generate and, and, and move our uh, understanding of the world forward. And we've got so many specific brands from different parts of what the library does. What's, what's the solution or what's the value of trying to break down those silos? I think it is very much about moving. For one thing, I think it's about how can you start to create new language, language around the type of spaces and places. Um, the dialogue that's often played out about well, you don't need libraries because you've got the internet or it's all online is first of all difficult because it's associating the library purely with the stuff it holds. So I think one of the things that we're looking at and everyone is, I think, is the idea of the library as a third space. There are very few places actually um, in society today where, you know, it's not, a for, it's not formal schooling or formal learning. It is not the workplace. It's also not the wall. So it's not a place where you actually have to go. Um, you can go, but you've got to pay for something. It is truly inclusive, truly um, open to all. And that is a different kind of space that I think we're losing sight of in some of the discussion around libraries. 
but it's also about understanding language um, and thinking you know there's a lot that gets talked about health well-being those sorts of outcomes how well have we how well have we articulated um, the role for many communities in having the kind of spaces that feel safe, inclusive, mm -hmm. neutral, um, democratic, but also which often represent their culture. So access to cultural knowledge and those sorts of things as well. Absolutely. Um, I think one of the things, and I'll just share one example from the education sector here in New Zealand, there is a really active dialogue and debate on at the moment about the future of schooling. And one of the dimensions of that is a lot of buzz around modern learning environments. That's the term, modern learning environments. And at its heart, that is about transforming spaces of learning, as in you know, the formal classroom, into, into a much more open, flexible, um, student-centered places and spaces that support diverse learning styles, the new kinds of pedagogical approaches. What is ironic in that is that up until recently, the idea of library was nowhere in that discourse. Hmm. And yet libraries and schools are probably the only actual modern learning environments in many places because they are student-centered and flexible and responsive and a place yes. where students can have a sense of agency. And you mentioned environments and you also mentioned spaces and places earlier. Yep. Is there is it one or the other when it comes to places versus online? No. What's the synergy and that, there? And that is about this, and I guess in terms of mental model of library, yeah, it is about it is about the virtual, it's about the physical, it is actually about the experience, and it is also about the way in which it supports the entire, um, you know, it is aspirational, but it, it supports multiple, multiple constituencies, multiple yeah. genders, multiple priorities. But until we find a way, I think, to be in the discourse of other sectors. So it is about this getting out of our silo. Uh -huh. um, and I think a lot of that is about language. Um, and I think it is also about where are we at health conferences? Where are we yeah. at educational conferences, business conferences, technology conferences, as opposed to library conferences? Does it have to do with the intersection? Absolutely. Is that the where the potential that, is? Um, insight arise at the intersection of boundaries, yeah. whether they are boundaries between sectors, disciplines, agencies, mm. professional groups, Absolutely. or even ways of thinking, you know, the, even in the research space. And I think libraries have both a challenge and an opportunity there because they are often so well placed to be in multiple, they have mm. multiple ways they can connect, but they also suffer from invisibility. Yeah. Almost for that. So the flip side of being kind of able to be there for everyone is that you're also at, only at the side of everything. Interesting. Not central. And does that apply to literacies as well? Yeah, I think the, well I think the, the, the often very unhelpful debates around literacy are equally, they are often articulated around print versus digital or um, assumptions are made, kids don't read, they need this. There, there's not a, there's often not a really well understood concept of a, a holistic and integrated mm. approach to literacy which is fundamentally about how do you make sense of the world uh. how do you participate and how do you contribute and you know we're format agnostic you know mm -hmm. it is not about whether it's an ebook or a book but it is about getting to a point of discernment and literacy fundamentally this i don't know if you know dr ross todd who is the he is the director of the uh, of scholarship school libraries at Rutgers University and he used to talk about fundamentally we need to think about helping people to know what to believe what to doubt what to ignore and what to care about and that is that is directly related to literacy and how do you discern and evaluate ask the right questions and the value of libraries throughout these changes and this I think you mentioned earlier a complex set of attributes to be literate in the current yep. context yes that, so does that mean that instead of focusing on specific literacies, it's that complex suite of attributes that Absolutely. we're trying to instill? Totally, and, um, and Andrew can talk m much more about digital literacy and its relationship to digital citizenship. But I think that we have lost something in thinking, getting very focused on format. Hmm. So if you're thinking, well, we have to have people need to know how to use all the tools and so on, you're missing a piece, which is how do you support young people, in fact everyone, to know 
Well, in this context, this would be the right set of tools and yeah. thinking about decoding and sense making to bring to this kind of question. Yeah, so contextual sense making. Contextual, absolutely. And then if we look yeah. at how constant technology is changing, yeah. how is that impacting the outlook and the provision of literacies within the digital framework? Is, should we be still looking at digital literacies or how do we get to a sense of digital citizenship yeah. from there? I, I think it's about making, making sense of it in an accelerated, what, everything around us is, is I think, uh, almost encourages uh, sort of ongoing consumerism and that's not what this is about this is about more moving up from from just sort of the great pipeline of the internet feeding your every whim and, and some and some good stuff thrown in there as well but whereas trying to be more creative uh, adding to the cognitive sort of surplus I guess and adding and adding a lot of value that where you feel more empowered to add to the conversation rather than just receive and that's if you think about the way we process news, the way that information is bundled up to us uh -huh. uh, compared to even five years ago, it's, 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 quite, it's quite striking. So is there a bit in there about confidence to contribute and not just consume? Absolutely. Confidence to, confidence to contribute, uh, the confidence to uh, collaborate and co-create with different kinds of people, people who can bring something and not feel threatened by that. And that's why the, the National Library, I feel, is, is a great space because it's, it's, it's one of the most neutral places that I know of where where all sorts of people can come together and feel like they're putting together this uh, their best offering in creating new knowledge because we've got a whole set of problems coming around the corner and right in front of us that we've never seen before yeah and we don't have anything to reference uh, so it's about how do we how do we take the minds and the skills of people who are in the community and and find the sweet spot where everyone can, can work together effectively and instead of just I've got a new iPhone, I've got a new device, um, and it's going to get me onto this app or this particular piece of software, and that's going to lead me to where? Not to more leisure time, we don't need any more of that, we need more creation time, we need more uh, problem solving skills, more sifting through what's really important, like wow. what you said. Better questions. Actually. Better questions. So, in a way, the library providing the magic spot for maximizing the community? Yeah, the physical, the virtual, the people connections that you get, the, huh. the number yeah. of teachers who've come here who've connected mm -hmm. that we might not see again for another two years, their relationship was sparked at a session we might have had here. And uh, you have different kinds of conversations when you're outside of your own learning context Absolutely. that you're there yeah. for every day. Yeah. So this space, in this room in particular, uh, I think encourages that kind of collaboration, that kind of thinking, and that, and that kind of openness. Yeah, that's very impressive. Yeah. So is there something next that you're inspired for the National Library to address or, or provide a local solution or at least for to explore? I think, uh, well, for our area, which is probably what we should focus on, which is very much around supporting schools and learning, um, I think some of the th next things around how can we leverage some of the really great um, infrastructure and technological particularly digital infrastructure that is coming and we've got an example here in New Zealand with the Network for Learning. So this will be a great new space in which people will find all kinds of wonderful stuff. The opportunity I think for us is to create narratives within that to give people a more of a sense of the kind of learning knowledge pathways because people don't need more information. What they need is context, scaffolding, um, and I think ways to feel really good um, about working with others to create something that's of value but you know I think there is a need for curation and I think the other thing is how we can then use some of that to mirror the digital infrastructure the idea of those national networks how can they be then almost um, mirrored with the kind of physical networks and the professional networks so there's the human dimension and I think that's a big part of what the human and social dimension. Um, who do we connect with in other areas of priority? How do we bring them into to programs? And there's quite a lot there. We've got things coming up like World War One. Well, we've got World War One coming up. The 100 years of World War One, um, and that's the kind. That's a particular learning context and information seeking context is going to be playing out in every community. That gives us an opportunity 
to actually kind of, I feel like libraries can sort of come in around all kinds of, yeah. seep in everywhere. Absolutely. And, but in a way that's got some actual purpose that's not, that is huh. supporting other people. That's a great point. So the library kind of seeps value yeah. throughout the modern life cycle. Totally. Very interesting. With the challenge again of how do we then do that, and I think libraries do it, but how do we do it in such a way that we remain neutral, that we remain kind of flexible and able to kind of adapt and come into these spaces, but not at the same time lose visibility. Because I think that, um, I can't remember who I heard this from, I think Stephen Abrams, but that term of anagnosis, which is that libraries suffer from a lack of visibility because the outcomes for libraries are actually mediated through multiple other yeah. players. And that anagnosis being the idea that there is evidence of what works, but anagnosis is the sort of almost, almost willful ignoring mm. of what actually works. But I think that's because the libraries we haven't necessarily framed it right. So yeah. we talk about libraries and actually what we should be talking about is new knowledge. And health the outcomes, social skills cohesion, within skill digital citizenship, the, yeah. econo the economy, yeah. innovation. We talk. We should be talking about those, and then we find the way to bring library into it. Well, Not it sounds like the work you're doing is a great entree point to that. And yeah. any other final words for librarians about uh, inspiring our um, path through the future? I think the only thing I would say is I've been a librarian for a long time. I think it is like lots of people, a way more exciting time to be a librarian mm -hmm. than any time before, mm -hmm. that libraries, I, I think, have, I don't think it is, I think it is multiple futures, not one. I mean, we have a position in our team, which is School Library Futures, it, it, so it's about multiple possible scenarios, all of which, though, are about real outcomes that, that are about supporting and serving humanity. A, as you said, Andrew, the biggest questions we've got coming. Um, we have a real yeah. part to play in that, we sh and we need to be have a level of confidence and yeah. real skill to navigate that with with passion and with um, a good tactical yeah. strategy. Absolutely. Yeah. And I guess what I would add too is a part of our the leading edge um, yeah. um, exhibition that we have going on here and in Wellington. It starts with the with the phrase "find what you're good at and be bold enough to try to lead lead the world." Hmm. And I think. People need to think about what, what they're passionate about and if you're a librarian or a teacher or you're a support staff or however way you're part of a learning community, find out what it is that you are really passionate about and and bring that to the front somehow. And that, that can always happen in a school, but, but in this environment I feel like it's something it's a place where we can elevate yeah. people to Absolutely. take risks and, and mm -hmm. so it's finding your passion and then elevate it to a level that's gonna inspire other people and, and be the missing piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For other people, and I think that's what people need to remember: is that what they know may not seem like a big piece to the mass, to the, to the big, you know, big puzzle of the universe, but actually it might be that missing piece to someone else's query. Absolutely. And uh, I would just inspire or encourage people to. That's to, great. To, to well, that's great that inspiration. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I'm really impressed by the Learning Futures team at the National Library of New Zealand in Auckland. Thank you.